15 spoilers. And welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for The Last Ship, Season 2, Episodes 6 and 7, The Long Day's Journey and Alone and Unafraid. I am your host, Cleo. Welcome to the One Woman Podcast. Did I miss last week? Yes. That's, that's, the, end of my, that's, that's the end of my statement. <laughs> Oh, end of my confession. Yeah, I, uh, you know, life. I have a day job and stuff. So things, uh, come up. And I may be responsible for the first episode I've seen on TV podcast has ever missed, but I'm making up for it with a double episode! And I figured it wouldn't be too bad since, um, we already had a double episode. The first, uh, first, uh, the, the premiere of this season was in fact a double episode. But anyway, these two episodes were really good and they're very tied into each other. Obviously, it's, it's, excuse me, part of the same arc. So, um, it's, it's, it's alright, everything's cool, is really what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so we're still reeling after the, uh, destruction of all the labs and, um, they go to the, the USS Nathan James goes to Florida um, to Dr. Hunter's Labs. Not uh, not before uh, pe people get pissy at each other. Um, it's really both a side of Dr. Scott and a side of Chandler, Commander Chandler, that we have not seen before. Commander Chandler is like insanely focused that we have our new our new mission is to d destroy the ship the sub is the sub is the most important thing Rachel's like the fuck you talking about <laughs> the fuck you talking about we're still fighting a fucking disease yes I mean this is also honestly the first time I'm uh, disagreeing with Commander Chandler um not on any of the sort of the tactical stuff that he's done in these two episodes but more of the mindset he's in. Uh, so I thought that everything he did, some of it was a little risky, but I still think that they were good things to do. The thing I'm not okay with is that he's ignoring advice from Master Chief and, and Exo Slattery. He's going after this guy, not because... Not to, like, not to protect the, you know, the cure, and not to help stop the virus, but it's a vendetta. It really is. And Master Chief said it perfectly. He's like, y you can't, you can't do that. You gotta stop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope we're gonna get more, and I said this a couple episodes ago, but I hope that we get more of Master Chief character building a backstory and we got a because we got a lot of him last season we because the first half of last season it was like this is this guy this he's very religious that and it was just we had a face value of master Chief. and then the second half of last season they're like this is why this is why he believes all these things so strongly this is why he's such a good leader this is why all of this stuff so i want more <laughs> master chief but I feel like there was just so much that was said about him last season that we already understand him, you know? We have a very clear picture of who and why Master Chief is the way he is. So, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I just, I love Master Chief and any chance I get to talk about him, I'm just like, I love you, you're awesome. We follow most of these people into battle. All of these people. Anyway, Facebook. Um, yeah, the uh, the ransacking of Doctor Hunter's lab was 
pretty bad, as bad as the Solace. Um, yeah, I mean, on the same level, really. And, uh... This show's getting pretty, pretty gruesome. It's, uh... Interesting to see. We find just, they found just bodies. Like, same thing as Solace. Lined up, executed, um... And the video Dr. Hunter left was really just like, wow, that sucks. <laughs> but it's a very good thing that that was there, because Airborne Cure, yay, there's hope. Uh, very good thing that the doctor from The Solace is on board with them. I have his name here. Where is it? Dr. Malowski. It's a very good thing that they have Dr. Malowski. Uh, on board because Dr. Scott's work is not over. Finding this video, it, it's given her a whole new way of looking at how they can get the cure to people. An airborne cure is going to ruin the immune's day. It's just gonna, <laughs> it's really just gonna ruin their, their whole plan for do world domination. Uh, and, which would be great, because they're fucking assholes. I mean, the, the guys in charge are assholes. The people, they're, they're people. I mean, they're just people trying to live and survive, and they've drunk the Kool-Aid a little bit too much, some of them, so, you know. It's what happens. Um. Yeah. I already talked about Chandler, uh, ignoring good counsel, which is a bad idea. Do not ignore Master Chief and, and, and Jane. Do not ignore Jane and Vera, his very favorite gun. <laughs> yeah, and some, some of it was good advice, and he was just like, no, we're doing it my way. It's like, Chandler, stop it! <laughs> and I think that's going to be dangerous. It's going to be dangerous because Chandler's always been level-headed. He's always come up with good plans that have worked. They've worked. And uh, let's face it, this one kind of worked too. Um, but the point I want to make is that his men and ladies will follow him where whatever he does. Any crazy thing. He's got their trust. And he's going to accidentally abuse it. <laughs> and, um... I think it's going to get a lot of people in trouble. Um, and I think that's... Because we haven't seen... We've seen just a bit of the conflict between the Nathan James and the sub. <laughs> the sub of which I have forgotten the name. I'm the worst. Anyway, we've only seen the beginning. And I feel like there's not going to be just one encounter and then that's it. It's over. It's going to be a lot of encounters. Like, we have... How many episodes are in the season? I don't even know. Wiki, give me the answers. Um, 13 episodes. Or at least... Uh, yeah, no, 13 episodes. This is a summer show. This is a summer show. 13 episodes. So we are halfway there. I think we're gonna... There's gonna be a lot of fuck-ups before they pull it together and really uh, launch a good, good uh, offensive or defensive, whatever the case may be, against the sub. So I really think that Chandler's going to... It's gonna get choppy. His, his uh, command is gonna get choppy. He's gonna make mistakes and people are gonna be like, we, yeah, we, we, we like following you. We're... we're, we're you know, but you're, it's too far, you've, d you've gone too far. I, I just think that, that this show is doing a very good job of, like, tension and building and I seriously think my favorite episode is that one with the pacing, um, when they're, oh, Achilles, Achilles is the name of the sub, I'm an idiot. Uh, Achilles, I think, honestly, really is my favorite episode because of the pacing. Crazy... Well done, pacing. Um, so, yes, they go, they find immune, the immune 
com compound. It's not really a compound. Um, they find where they're stationed, and Chandler's like, "We're going dark. We're going in uh, black ops shit." And uh, <laughs> Slider's like, N "No, stop! <laughs> Don't do that. Do the opposite of that. Do not go dark." Uh, and he does not listen and goes dark. And it's like, "What are you doing?" And this is this is the this is the thing because. It, on paper, it's a terrible plan. On paper, there's too much risk and none of reward. But he took the risk and ended up with coming out on top. He was successful in the mission and got two extra things to take home. So it's like, yes, you. this was probably not a good decision, but you did it because you're like magic or something. And I think that's, it's going to get them in trouble. They're going to get in trouble. Ooh, it's not gonna be good. Uh, yeah, Super Black Ops. I think my favorite part um, of them getting into cover is uh, the Aussie. Oh God, what's the Wolf? Is Wolf doing a barrel roll out of the truck in broad daylight, being all like stealth, like looking like he's trying to be stealthy? with his rifle. Just like barrel roll with the duffel bag and the rifle out of the truck. It's like, I had to go back and watch it again because it was just so funny. Uh, <laughs> you need to get this like super serious, like, barrel roll. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have a lot of face time in these two episodes because he was, um, he was the eyes and the voice when the rest of the team was dark. Uh, and, and, and obviously the sniper. He's a good fucking sniper. <laughs> he really is. Um, in video games, and I'm sure in real life if ever I shot a sniper rifle, um, I would be terrible at it. I'm terrible at sniper rifles in video games. Um, I always thrive in melee uh, combat and stuff like that. But I seem, I always seem to be interested in snipers character sniper characters I don't know why because it's not me <laughs> I would never in my in any of my past lives or future lives be uh, be able to be a sniper uh, I I don't know why I find them so fascinating winter <coughs> <Mr>. soldier <coughs> sorry what <clears throat> I'm fine T totally not thinking about Bucky all the time say gotta save it for the Marvel podcast gotta save it for the Marvel podcast <laughs> I'm thinking about doing a strictly Marvel podcast. Let her talk nothing but Marvel. <laughs> anyway, back to the last ship. Um, oh, I said that. I'm like saying the things I mean. I like I, I wrote down. I'm saying them before I get to them, and uh, I'm actually pretty proud of myself that I'm remembering to say all this stuff. Uh, so Doctor Scott uh, comes up with a way to to, to implement the airborne. Cure, she's sitting there like going crazy trying to figure out how to make it work in powder form because I guess whatever she was trying uh, was working. Um, and then the cook, I think his name is Doc, uh, <laughs> comes in with these like, it's a, d describing like how to cook this the beautiful dish and, and she's just like, you're the you're a genius and runs out. He's like, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna eat my food. What? What? <laughs> it was seriously. Oh, I love it. It's the funniest scene. Actually, I was actually just saying that the sniper, the I'm sorry, that wolf's barrel roll was the funniest scene. I lied. <laughs> Doc and uh, Doctor Scott scene was was much funnier. Uh, but yes. So her and Dr. Scott and Dr. Malowski and Patrice and Doc are all working on getting that powder to work. And it's awesome. I like that. And now the science, science team is not getting as much screen time as, you know, Black Ops team. But... But I feel like for the first time in this half of the uh, in this half of the season, for the first time in this season, that's what I meant to say. For the first time in the season, science team has something important to do. It has a 
a focus. Where like before it was uh, all administrative, like we gotta get this cure out, we gotta do these things, we gotta find these places, you know, whatever. Now it's like, we have to figure this science thing out. We need to science the shit out of this. And I like that. That is what I loved about the first season. And that's kind of what I'm I'm torn because this season is amazing in terms of pacing and, and characters and all of that stuff. But there's not enough science. Like I loved in the first season, Dr. Scott had just as much screen time as Chandler, as Tom Chandler. And now she's severely cut. It's a lot of action, which I'm I'm fine with. But I think what made this show special and what really made it made me come back is the science is let's bitch let's do some science and I like that we were, we're getting scenes like that again but it's not enough more science people <laughs> more science um man the Ramsey brothers listen <laughs> dysfunctional fucking family if ever there was one um Ned, all Ned wants to do is go home to England and live like, but he like talks about England like there's a fucking mountain of gold there waiting for them, which probably, let's face it, there fucking probably is. <laughs> but he's like, we could live like kings, it's gonna be awesome. And it's like, I'm pretty sure England is as much of a shithole right now as America is. I mean, I guess it's home, you know? So, if you're going to live in a shithole, it might as well be your your own shithole. I don't know. I think he's very, very short-sighted, Ned. And I think if, they, if he did get what he wanted, if he did go home, he still wouldn't be satisfied. He just seems like that kind of character to me. Um, and Sean, gee, I don't even know what to fucking think about Sean. Because he's smart, but he's also really dumb. And I don't know how that exists, and I don't know how he's able to lead all these people by being both smart and dumb at the same time. And you see it in his eyes. You see it when he talks to Ned and when Ned is, is, is uh, skeptical about the whole being chosen thing. He really believes the shit he's spewing. He believes it. Like, he thinks he was chosen by God because he wasn't affected by this disease. Which is probably scarier than, um, you know, just someone who's using people. He actually believes it. Zealot is definitely more scary than a regular villain. Nine times out of ten. <laughs> Much scarier. Um, but anyway, they have a really strange relationship. <laughs> Sean holds a knife to Ned's throat, and it's like, it just... They're so... I'm hesitant to use the word bipolar, but hot and cold. They're so hot and cold, like this and that. It, their, their emotions change in a split second, and I can't wait to see more of them. And I know, I know, all this shit is going to end with Sean killing Ned. There is no way it can end any other way. Like, I can just feel it because Sean seems disappointed that his brother doesn't believe like he does, because he can see it, he knows. He knows that uh, Ned doesn't believe it like he does. And, I mean, he put a knife to his brother's throat. I don't think he's very far away from just stabbing him. You know, Caesar style. I feel like it's gonna happen. It's gotta. Calling it now. <laughs> Sean's gonna kill Ned, I'm calling it now. Uh... So the, let's see, who goes, it's Chandler, uh, Burke, and Ravit. They go in to the rally, and, you know, they're just sitting there. It's like, and I, I had this, my heart stopped, because I'm like, Sean is standing, Sean is giving a speech, he's gonna know, and it's like, wait, hold on, Sean has no idea what uh, Chandler looks like. Woo! And then Ned walks in the room and is like, fuck! <laughs> Get out of there! And I mean, like, Chandler steps back a little, turns his head away, but he doesn't try to hide himself, which is smart, because 
trying to hide yourself sometimes draws attention to yourself, so I guess he did the right thing, but I was just like, no, duck, run, get out of the room. <laughs> Super funny. Uh, my, my react, sometimes my reactions, um, to shows crack me up when I reflect back on them, like this, like this episode. Uh, and like most episodes of Supernatural. <laughs> Oh my goodness. If you if you don't follow me on Twitter and you'd like to see a a long line of tweets. I I live tweeted the season finale of Supernatural. And I don't tweet that much, so it wouldn't be too hard to find them. But uh let's just say it was hilarious looking back on it. Very not hilarious in the moment, but hilarious looking back on it. Anyway, I am Tangent City today, uh, but I am hitting all the points that I need to hit. So, I mean, eh, six of one, half dozen the other. Anyway, they're in the rally, and the president, like, 12th in line, or everybody's dead. Okay, fine, let's see. It's a very Battlestar Galactica sort of thing. Uh, it's like, oh, what, you're the secretary of education? Guess what, everyone else is dead, you're president, congratulations. Um, and it, I mean, at first I was like, yeah, you're definitely just, you're reading the company line, you know, we're the immunes, we're the, you know, whatever. But he really, he's, he's really a believer, or at least he thinks he's a believer. He drank the Kool-Aid. Um, I'm not sure, because we haven't heard much from him, um, after... <laughs> I mean, I mean, after all that shit went down, we haven't really heard him say much. Um, but next episode, we're going to hear a lot from him. He's going to talk a lot. And I'm very interested to hear what he has to say. Um, because he does not seem like a dumb man. He seems like a very smart man. Um, I just, I'm, I can't wait. <laughs> but it's so funny because... Chandler's just like, uh, he's our boss. We gotta, we gotta rescue our commander in chief. It's like, does he, you, does he really want to be rescued? A, does he really want to be rescued? B, are you sure you're not doing this for vengeance purposes? C, calm down. <laughs> this is all I have to say to Chandler. Um, yeah, Chandler, he got in with the Secret Service, like, super quick and easy. Like, that little plan, I guess he knows... Chandler knows he's a good judge of character and a reader of character, which sometimes are two different things. Uh, you can judge somebody to be a good character but not be able to read into their character. Chandler can read into their character and he knows, like, what's gonna, you know, how things, how certain things are gonna affect certain people. He knew exactly how to get in, and it fucking worked. And in that moment when him and Sean are, are like that, I knew Sean wasn't going to shoot him. Like, they were trying to build the tension, like, I'm pointing a gun at you, I could shoot you. I, I apologize for the bad British accents today. I am... <laughs> Usually my British accents are better, but it's not today. <laughs> it is not this day. Um, he's like, I'm going to shoot you. And uh, I, I was like, you're not going to shoot him. But it was, it wasn't that I was afraid Sean was going to shoot Chandler. It was that I was afraid Chandler was going to get busted. So, that, that's another example of tension. Although it wasn't done as well as, uh, as the Achilles episode. But that fucking tension is crazy. Um... Oh, and th that's the thing. How did Sean not recognize... That's what it was. That's what it was. How did Sean not recognize Chandler's voice? They spoke over the radio. Right? Did they speak over the radio? Oh, maybe, maybe they didn't speak over the radio. Because I was watching the episode and I was like, How do you not recognize his voice? They might not have spoken over the radio. They didn't. No! He spoke with Ned, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I had a false sense of tension. 
there. That's it. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I had a false sense of tension there. Anyway, good scene. Doesn't matter <laughs> where the tension came from. It was a good scene. Ravit and Burke. Okay, this is getting really weird. <laughs> First off, I love how Chandler just legit punches Burke in the nose. Like, breaks his fucking nose. I thought it was like a fake punch, he's on the ground, you know, whatever, but it cuts back to Burke and he's like blood all over his chest, like broken fucking nose. It's so funny. But the, but Ravit kisses him in order to pop his nose back into place. And I'm like, there are, honey, there are about a thousand ways you could have done that. She's, it's, it's getting weird. Like it's, I was cool with it at first because it was like flirty. But she's crossed the line of flirty without crossing the line. Do you know what I mean? And I'm very confused. <laughs> if you don't know what I mean, it doesn't matter. I just want to know what's up with them, and it's pissing me off that I don't know. <laughs> Is all I had to say about that. Um, I don't know if I said this already, but Dr. Scott's still not getting the powder to work. Oh, the poor little... The poor little mice, uh, she injected them with the serum, no, not the serum, she injected them with the virus, and, uh, um, administered the powder, the airborne cure, but the ones farther away died, so it's not, it's not really working. See, and, and this is the science stuff, I hope in the next couple episodes we're gonna get some more science, because... This is a problem. This is like a big problem and it's it needs to be solved before um you can take that next step against the uh immune, basically. It's it's gotta be solved. Is is all. I want more science! I want more science Can I just say, flipping back to Black Ops, Danny and Tex are like the funniest. I want them in scenes together all the time now. They're so funny. Oh, what was it? Uh, they have really awesome chemistry. It's, uh, oh, oh, Duck Dynasty. <laughs> you look like Duck, Duck Dynasty. You're so vanilla. <laughs> so funny. Uh, but Danny finds Niels. And that, Niels, okay. Obviously, Niels is a scumbag. He created a virus on purpose to kill a lot of people. So obviously, he's a scumbag. But he's like a super scumbag now that he's trying to spread the disease by putting it in teddy bears. He's such a fucking asshole. Um, as far as we know, the virus... I, I, also, as far as what Niels has te told Ned... The virus in the teddy bears is not an alternate strain like I theorized. But that's only as far as we know and as far as Niels has told Ned. Which Niels does not like Ned. <laughs> and probably would not tell him the whole truth if he could help it. So, Dr. Scott now has, which is why I think there will be more science next episode because Dr. Scott has to analyze this new or this, uh, the teddy bear and the, the virus and the teddy bear. I think she will find an alternate strain which will give her another problem on top of getting the airborne to work. So, um, yeah. I honestly, I'm still, I'm sticking with my guns. I think it's an alternate strain of the virus. I think so. Uh, uh, yeah, so our... You know, our Black Ops team grabs the half. The, half of the team grabs the president. Half the team grabs Niels. Um, they set the fucking truck on fire. A lot of people die. Jesus. Uh, Chandler, Ravit, and and Burke just like hand to hand, forks in in eyes and and uh, fucking just brutal kitchen fight. I, I was watching. It was like holy crap. And I mean, I'm not sensitive to that, you know, the, the, that kind of violence in shows and, and, uh, and TV. I'm not, like, I'm 
pretty cool with it, but I didn't expect it from this show, although I should have seen it ramping up when uh, Kara just put a 50 cal through that guy's face from, a, from you know, a, another ship, you know, basically a thousand yards away. Um, so I should have seen it ramping up to this kind of fighting. But that was fucking crazy. That was crazy. They get on a chopper. They get they get air evacuated. They have the president on their ship. And it's not it's not gonna be good. <laughs> it's it's gonna be hard to bring him around, I think. I don't he's drank that Kool-Aid, you know. I I really don't know. Like I'm nervous. I'm ner very nervous for the show. But a lot of awesome things are going to happen next episode. Next episode, Safe Zone. Still trying to piece together Dr. Hunter's lost formula, Rachel grapples with the fact that Neil's her sworn enemy, I like how they use sworn enemy, is now on board the Nathan James while Chandler works to gain intel and reverse the brainwashing Mincher. Is that his name? Is that the president's name? Mincher? Mitch? Michener? Suffered at the hands of the Ramses. Uh, I love, I love when Tex and Danny bring, uh, bring Niels with them. He was like, ah, uh, I, I, we thought you, you and, and Dr. Scott might want to talk to this asshole. I was like, yeah, we do. We fucking really do. Um, so that's it for this episode. Next. Episode 8 is gonna be, I think episode 8 is gonna be less action than than these two, especially this, this last one. Um, mostly because, I wonder if, like, the, sh the sub will make a surprise appearance in this episode, but at least, judging by the synopsis, um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be science! Science! I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my science. Uh, <laughs> but that, yep, that's it for this episode. Um... You can follow me at Cleomoto on the socials and on Twitch at the Cleomoto. I am going to swear I'm gonna stream soon. I've been wanting to do Disney Infinity and it's gonna happen in the next couple days. You can find all of us on the ASO TV podcast at, on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google Plus, MySpace, and right here on YouTube. Follow us for some more podcasts from some of your favorite TV shows. Until next week. Bye bye.